Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Bray, and I'm excited to share with you how you can unleash the magic that's in your classroom. You're amazing, and you know you're excited about your classes and, and the students, and everything you do is just amazing. And sometimes it's difficult. Oh, I don't mean to say that, but it does happen. And there's ways to unleash the magic in your classroom and do it through stories. So I'm Barbara Bray. I wrote Define Your Why, and I'll share a little bit more about myself as we go along, but I'm glad you could join me. I want to talk about <clears throat> living with uncertainty. Well, we've been doing that since COVID, maybe even before. <clears throat> and a little after. But what does that mean for us now? So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about moving beyond the comfort zone because it's easy to stay there, stay with the status quo and kind of make excuses so we don't have to. But let's just talk a little bit about that. And then I'm going to talk about stories and how the stories can help us if we can listen a little closer and talk a little bit about empathy and bring in stories again to build relationships because that's what it's all about. It's about the kids and the relationship. So let me go now and let's start with uncertainty. Ooh. Yes, we've been living with uncertainty since uh, COVID started and some of us are still having problems trying to figure out how do we do this? I'm talking about learning loss, teachers are quitting and oh my goodness, what about us? I mean. There's a lot. So how do we deal with it? So I've been talking to a lot of teachers. I've been sharing things that have been happening and looking at strategies that they can actually be successful in a situation that's tough or what would they do next? And sometimes we have to look at all the options instead of just reacting. And a lot of it starts with our fear because we hear things, we're hearing things at school, we're hearing things at home, we're hearing things from our kids. And a lot of it is we got to really know what's real. And we can do kind of what Zig Ziglar says. There's two meanings, forget everything and run, leave, or face everything and rise. And the choice is yours. So some of it Maybe it could be that there might be some struggling, your struggles you have at your own site and you feel like, oh, I just can't do this anymore. Well, the problem is you're probably the most wonderful teacher in the whole world. We don't want to lose you. So there might be ways that maybe you look at another situation, another school, or, or you consider that if you do this job and because you love the kids, you love <clears throat> the staff, you love the people you're with. Then you look at some other things that you love in your life to make bring that passion back, that feeling <clears throat> that is good for you. So I wrote about it in my book. I wrote some ideas, but I want you to just think about where you are now and how you can face everything and rise. And some of the things that I had to look at as you can hear, I'm having some problems with my voice and I have a health issue that is kind of taking over my life right now. But I realized I tell everyone about living with uncertain times and, you know, rising above. And I figured maybe I better do it too. So I, I do have some bad days, but doesn't mean I have to have a bad life. And that's the same for you. And the other thing is, I have some feelings and I'm sad. And I realized I wasn't letting people know because I didn't want to be vulnerable. <clears throat> I didn't want people to know I was going through things. But I, my feelings are valid and they're real and I need to be able to talk about them. And same with you. And the only way you're going to get through some things is to actually go through it, which is kind of tough because sometimes you just want to hide under the covers and you don't want to do some things. So <clears throat> one of the things I tell everyone is, you know, teachers think they have to be perfectionists and they have to be the most wonderful expert in the room and everything. But you know what? 
we can't. You, you kind of have to look at you're enough, just that you are, and you are lovable, and you need to be gentle with yourself and forgive yourself for some of the things. I've had to learn how to ask for help. And I realized because I'm a kind of a generalist, <clears throat> I can't be everything to everyone. And so now I'm asking for a lot of help. I'm trying to get my inner voice since I'm having this problem with my voice. And, but I also know that I have things I have to say and I, I'm really want to get the word out about stories and about um, being there for each other because we're not alone. We, we can do this together and much better together than, than thinking we're, we're the only one who can do something. And I also had to learn that I can only control some things. I can't control other people. I, I just have to do it and be, um, do what the best I can. So you're hearing me with my voice like this, but I really wanted to share this idea with you. So bear with me if I sound like I have some cracking in my voice. The other is moving beyond the comfort zone. When you're having a tough time, a lot of times you just want to just kind of hunker down and you're in that fear zone kind of like you kind of lost, you have some self-doubt, lost the self-confidence. And I know I was doing that at some point. And I realized since I have this health issue, I wanted to learn everything about it. So I could work with my doctors and I could set new goals about what I could do. And I also want to do another podcast, a new one. Um, I didn't tell you, some of you may not know, I have a podcast and I'll share that a little bit later, but I'm talking about a new one. I'm writing another book. I want to learn how to be a publisher, all these things. It's not easy. I'm challenging myself. So I'm trying to get to that point where I can tell other people's stories <clears throat> and it's all about purpose. So I'm looking at my purpose. See if for yourself, if you can actually move to that learning zone about something maybe you've always wanted to do. It's kind of exciting if you find yourself in that position. Don't be afraid to start over again. This time you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. So think about that. And see how far you can get. When you start working with your kids, you start working on yourself and see how far you can get to move toward that growth zone. <clears throat> Viktor Frankl wrote the book, Me you know, Man's Meaning for Life. And he went through a lot. He was in the Holocaust and everything and made it. But he did say, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. And he was amazing how he got through everything. And I figured if, if he could do it, I could do it with some of the things I have to go through. You can do it with some of the things you have to go through. You see, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. And you will never get to that learning and growth zone. So I just want you to think about that because it's really important for you to take care of you, especially during these times. I was having trouble thinking about my life and not sure if I could really write this new book and be a publisher and all the things I want to do. Cause I did write to find you why. And I love the stories that people shared with me. So I really love writing, but I was struggling. I was struggling. And my husband said to me, you know, maybe the struggle's good for you. Maybe it's a blessing and a lesson all rolled into one. I thought, it's a blessing. I remember seeing that quote somewhere. So I found it from Karen Salmonson. It's when you're able to view painful lessons as blessings. It's, uh, it's seeing that that blessing in the lesson that your challenge had taught you. And I, I, every day I seem to see a blessing. And that's the way if we can start this year that way, that everything can be a blessing. Um, you never know where you're going to go with it. You never know what's going to happen with the kids. You never know what's going to happen with you, with your own direction and your purpose. It's exciting. And I, 
I hope I'm not getting too, too off course here, but I just, for me, I found I needed to really think about it in a different way. And it's changed, changed my life. So I wrote this in my book on chapter two is all about you being the main character of your story. And I realized that when teachers are putting all their energy on the kids that they forget that they have their own story. All of you have your own story. So think of this quote, you either walk inside your story and own it, or you stand outside your story and hustle for your worthiness. Brene Brown is so amazing. And I, I can't, you know, I just read all her things. I watch her videos. I watch it, read, read her books. And it's just to me, if you find someone who, who um, registers with you or relates to you, you know, just go back and look at it again and again until you get that you are the main character of your story. And everyone in your room has their they're a main character of their story and you may even want them to design a story about it. You never know what's going to happen. So in 2017, I started my podcast, the Rethinking Learning Podcast. Then that started talking about the why with everyone. And I have about 147 more on the way. I did reflections also. These I didn't put them all up here, but I just wanted to let you know I, I've learned from everyone who's been on my show and what I love about it is many times we do a pre-podcast where I kind of want to find out about them if there's anything we want to talk about in special like we're going to be on my virtual porch and I just want it to flow and many of them have said you know I've never told anyone this before and I went I'm going to put it up on the internet are you okay about that and they all let me do it and it's amazing. And many of them, I actually writing a new book called Grow Your Why, One Story at a Time. And I've asked 21, maybe a few more, to write a chapter in the book about their experiences, something that challenged them. And so it'll help others. You see, a lot of us not really sure what to do when we're challenged, but not realizing they are that blessing I just mentioned. And that's what I'm hearing and loving writing the writing process with everyone. It's it's you can tell this is my what I love, my joy. So I'm not going to show this video mainly because of the time. And I put a link into the handout. <clears throat> the link at the bottom is available for you to get at the handout that also links to this presentation. So you can look at it again if you want. Another Brene Brown, if we can share our story with someone who responds with empathy and understanding, shame can't survive. And that's not easy. Really listening is not easy. But I love this video. It's about empathy and the difference between empathy and sympathy. And it's a great run to show the kids and uh, learn from yourself. So I, when I started my podcast, I realized I was not really listening close enough. So I came across, right after I started my podcast, I found this quote from Hemingway, which kind of just helped me a little bit. Before you act, listen. Before you react, think. Before you spend, earn. That's a good one. <laughs> Before you criticize, wait before you pray, forgive, and before you quit, try. I shared this before, and a lot of people have actually put this up on their wall in the classroom. I also learned that I needed to talk less. I know I'm doing all the talking now, but I, in my podcast, I'm trying to stop talking as much and really listen to what they're saying. So I do a pre-podcast just to get to know the person really well and figure out what we're going to talk about on my virtual porch. But I also thought, how can we do this in the classroom? How can we figure out a way where we can learn the stories from each other and really listen and respond with interest 
and be respectful so we know that we heard and they know that we heard them it's 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 not easy so i i put a link to the post so you can see some of the strategies that um, might help you i was part of a story exchange so right when i started um my podcast and it was just so remarkable what they do is you are partnered with another person you may not know them and you tell your story in about two minutes they tell a, a story and they tell you a story and you're listening really closely because you're going to turn around and you're going to tell their story at, and you're going to take their view so the person that was telling my story said hi i'm barbara bray and started telling my story and I was listening to them tell my story <clears throat> it blew me away that first time I had no idea that someone could listen that closely really hear me feel me understand my heart it, and it takes a lot of work I've done this story exchange now in workshops webinars I did it at South by Southwest with hundreds, over a hundred people at one point and met districts and schools and or some organizations. What I found is some of the people, I mean, I had some people crying. They were never, no one ever heard them before like that. And then if you go to narrative4.com, you'll see um, some of the strategies they use in school. You may find this will be a wonderful way for the kids to get to know each other and also really learn how to listen. It, it's uh, really a wonderful way to reflect um, and share kind of what the stories that people share to each other. It, it's just beautiful. So I hope you get a chance to go there. And that link is also on the handout for you. So it all brings me back to well-being and, and the heart work. And for me, it was learning how to be mindful um, and learning mindfulness training. I, I felt it was really important because we tend to have a lot going on in our heads. I know that sometimes people will be talking to me and I'm thinking about, oh, I got, what am I going to do for dinner? Am I going to go shopping? Oh, wait a minute. Then I pick that up. You know, it, there's stuff going on in our heads that we have to quiet. And that's the same in the classroom. So there's a lot on mindfulness, you know, strategies. And one is how to stop your mind from going all over the place and stop and breathe and even do gratitude um, notes and, you know, they call them gratitude tales. And there's even a gratitude jar. There's things that I've done, ways to calm us down, to really think about what really matters. And instead of having your mind full, think of mindfulness. It, it's fun. And I, I actually responded to this after, uh, right when I was having some tough times, I did Empathy for You in Uncertain Times was a, um, a pot. I did a, a podcast and reflection, but I also wrote a post. And so if you wanted to check that out and think about this yourself, maybe about how you have empathy for you. Dr. Basil Marin said this quote, and I love it. It's doing the hard work before the hard work. We we have so much on a plate that we rush through that we don't take the time to really get to know the kids and learn about the stories and the culture and the diverse group that is right in front of you. And this is so important to get to know each other. It's, uh, it's like this quote, it's only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye and we need to see it. So I was very fortunate to go to New Zealand and work in 2017. Uh, you could tell it was a big year for me. 
I um, visited many schools in the North and South Islands. And I'm just pulling a few for you, just some ideas. And one is a wonder wall. They get to write on it every day, something they wonder about. Another was the hearts for your classroom. And this was one school. Every class in that school had hearts that the kids picked in the beginning of the year. And so they had come up with six themes and then they wrote their strategies around it. And this is one room where they hit, they actually had them hanging in the middle of the room. So what is the heart work in your classroom? How will you present that so you'll be able to see the magic? I put a few more things in the post that I put the link here and the link is also on the handout for you. But it is about having a growth mindset and feeling that, yes, okay, maybe I can't do it yet. All the things that we learn about, you know, building that mindset um, can be started and taken through the whole year. So when I went through some of the schools, I came across schools where um, almost all of the K, well, they were year one to year eight schools, had large classrooms with 100 kids and multiple little room breakouts along the sides. And they had four teachers and some other adults available, but they had strategies to make it work. One school had, um, actually several schools, had the trusted learner license. So they wanted kids in, you know, by a certain age, be able to be self-directed. And so they got to go outside, um, go to another class when they were done with some things and they could pull out their trusted learner license and say, yep, I'm doing it. I'm following through. And they could lose their license if they didn't, but it was interesting. Another was a year seven class, which is the picture on the left. And they were working on year long passion projects. And I found that many of the schools were doing those. And what the uh, students did is they were able to choose a theme, um, something they wanted to work on all year long and pick their mentors. And then they would present it at the end of the year. So there's one that did a was um, family was from Greece. So she wanted to learn Greek and she wanted to learn about the culture and the food. And then she'd do a presentation. So she asked members of her family, her grandfather, her uh, aunt, and others to be mentors. Another did patchwork, she said, and that was learning how to quilt from her grandmother. And then she would follow the process and film it and at the end be able to show the process and have her grandmother there and share the um, share the quilt that she did. I mean, they were all so amazing. Um, as you could tell, I just loved it and I wanted, I wanted to <laughs> do, I wanted to go to more schools. It was just wonderful. But I also do Zoom dance parties <laughs> and do other things with Zoom. And one of them, I also had breakout rooms so people could meet each other. And Tracy Browder, who is in Texas, a kindergarten teacher in Texas, and Stephanie Rothstein was a ninth grade uh, ELA teacher in um, California. And they were in a room together and they connected because first thing I wanted them to learn about was the sustainable development goals. And I wanted them to talk about it. And they went way beyond what I thought would happen. They ended up doing the collaborative multi-age uh, project around the goals and then had the kids work together on Zoom and be able to talk to each other. And so there's links to both of their projects and you can see how they worked out. It, it was fun, fun for me to see that it, we started dancing and then we actually learned from each other. And I wrote a post called Whatever It Takes. I wanted to share that with you because <clears throat> really there's so many things you're already doing in your classroom and you probably know about all these. But what I found, no matter where I went to different schools, it was 
we need to be able to have some way of greeting in the morning and what kind of morning meeting and telling our stories and really learning about each person. And there was a lot on portfolios for um, kids who even they were doing seesaw and youngs, and then they were also doing um, different types of portfolios using different platforms. But the main thing is the reflections that they were doing all day long. And in one school, they had at the end of every class, how did you take a risk in your learning today? Were there any new skills that you learned today? And then they would talk with each other and share. So that idea is be okay about them talking with each other, but also sharing what you've learned. And like I said, the relationships, that's really the most important thing. It's about how you build those relationships and keep them strong throughout the whole year. So everybody is, you know, you're establishing that culture that is based on trust and valuing everyone. So everyone has a voice, everyone shares their story and they feel a sense of belonging. Everyone, I mean, I don't know about you, but if you walk in a room and you don't feel like anyone knows you and they don't come up and talk to you and you don't feel safe, it's uncomfortable. And that's how some kids are feeling. So how do we make it so they feel safe, seen, and heard every day? That's the magic. That's the magic. And that quote from Manny Scott, even on your worst day, you can be a student's best hope. Think about that. You are. You make a difference every day. But sometimes things get in the way. So we have to stop once in a while and remember relationships first, kids first. And you also first. You got to take care of you. So there's so much I want to share. So I, I, like I said, there's a lot on the handout, but there's also information about me. I wanted to share that with you. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm on Twitter. I'm on threads now, LinkedIn and, and Facebook and Instagram. And, and you can go to my website, barbarabray.net. And these are my three books, Define Your Why, Make Learning Personal and How to Personalize Learning. So Thank you so much for the time and I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, you can go into the handout to get linked to this presentation. Thank you, everyone. And unleash the magic in your classroom. <laughs>